One of the most famous names in journalism, Sir Harold Evans, has died at the age of 92. Married for almost 40 years to fellow journalist Tina Brown, Evans forged a reputation as one of the most fearsome investigative writers of his time. Our media editor Amal Rajan looks back at his life. Harold Evans in the early 1980s, after he'd left Britain for America. On both sides of the Atlantic, he achieved success as a brilliant journalist and editor. But his greatest triumph had been to turn the Sunday Times into a campaigning newspaper. And his greatest campaign was that on behalf of victims of thalidomide. The paper won them increased compensation and scored a landmark victory for freedom of the press in the European court to the editor's delight. Tremendous. It's the most important judgment for the, not only for the freedom of the press, but for the citizens' right to know in England. The most distinguished group of judges have told the British government, reform the laws. They've got to do it now. After 13 years, he was banged out by the Sunday Times printers, a measure of the esteem in which his staff held him. Rupert Murdoch had bought the paper and asked Evans to edit the Times. It didn't work out. A year later, he'd resigned, claiming the proprietor wouldn't give him the editorial independence he'd been promised. He found America more congenial, later becoming a US citizen. The Americans are enormously welcoming and open. Uh, you wouldn't, I don't think, get quite the same thing in London. By now, he was overshadowed in the public eye by his younger, more glamorous wife, Tina Brown. She was the fashionable and sometimes controversial editor, first of Vanity Fair and later of The New Yorker. They were a power couple. From the Clinton White House down, they were at all the best parties. Eventually, Harold Evans was knighted, a fine journalist and editor who'd combined technical brilliance with a crusader's belief in the duty of the press to make the world a better place. Well, we can talk now to Jeff Adam Spink, who is chair of the Thalidomide Society. Um, good afternoon to you, Jeff. Just listening to that and watching that is an extraordinary life that he had. What sort of figure was he for you? He was a champion. He was a giant. I don't think our families will ever be able to repay the debt of gratitude we've got to him. I mean, he saw at a time when all the odds were stacked against us, whether it was legal or, uh, you know, industrial, political, nobody wanted to help the thalidomide families. But Harry Evans, alongside a couple of really um, uh, proactive MPs, Alf Morris and uh, Sir Jack Ashley, later Lord Ashley, um, they could actually see this injustice waiting to happen and they were not going to sit on the sidelines and watch it happening. I mean, it's, it, it's something, I would say, uh, something analogous to what's happening to the Grenfell families now. All the odds are stacked against them, but the truth has to come out. And if Harry was editing the Sunday Times with its brilliant insight team now, he'd be all over that. Mm. Did you know him personally? Yes, I did. We met in London often. He was incredibly helpful to us uh, when we were doing various campaigns, when we were campaigning for support from the British government, when we were campaigning against the German maker of thalidomide, Grunenthal. He wrote an excoriating piece when the Grunenthal CEO, Harold Stock, made an apology. And he said in his article, um, a lie wrapped in an apology is still a lie. And he called the guy out for uh, making a, a weasel apology to us. And, and I think for, for, for me, he's an example of how to grow old disgracefully because he never stopped writing. He never stopped campaigning. He never stopped editing. He never stopped encouraging and talking to people. And uh, as Amal said in his piece, being invited to all the best parties in New York and in London. But he was also somebody who could never confront, who had to confront injustice, he had to out injustice. Yes, he did. He had that absolutely uh, firm, strong thread of honesty and seeking after truth running through his bones. He would not, he could not let it lie and he would not let it lie. OK, very good to talk to you, Jeff. Thank you so much. Jeff Adams Spink there, who is the chair of the Thalidomide Society. Thank you.